Good morning and welcome back. It's bright and early. It's not bright and early, it's 11 a.m. I wanted to head off at nine o'clock because, well, I fancied a proper UK road trip. Why wait until the spring or summer when the weather can be this glorious? And even if it starts raining and gets cold, I have everything I need for any weather situation right here. Surely any time of the year can be incredible for a biking trip, an adventure. I'm going to be heading and nothing is booked at all, not even tonight's accommodation. I'll head to the Yorkshire Dales in short, a place that I've never been before, but so many, so many Northern Englanders recommend that I go here. There'll be beautiful picturesque little villages, some of the finest riding roads in England and breathtaking scenery all the way. Today will be a five and a half hour slog on the motorway so I will experience everything on the Transalp. I'm going to aim to get as close to the Yorkshire Dales as possible today, roughly 240 miles away. When I'm there, I'll then turn off motorways and enjoy the beautiful winding English country roads. And I will make sure on at least one of the days of this trip, not even to turn off motorways, to properly go off-roading on this bike. I'll find some off-road tracks and head off into the wilderness all by myself. The key for this trip, pack as light as possible. All I have with me is my backpack and this waterproof roll top bag. There is nothing else I'm taking. In fact, the only clothes I'm taking I'm wearing now, apart from three pairs of pants in that I've packed as light as possible. I want to make this an old school style trip, like they used to do in the 70s, where all they'd have is a little roll bag on the back or a backpack. As light as possible, keep it as simple as possible. I'm not worried every day about having to pack up loads of bags and equipment. It's just going to be me, my trusty friend, the Transalp, and the beautiful, beautiful vibes of the freedom that a road trip can bring. I'll do a quick walk around of, I'll grab the camera. I'll do a walk around of my setup because incredibly, Weirdly, the Transalp doesn't come as standard with a charging port in the cockpit. I don't get that. So small backpack, that's what I'll carry. This is only, only my filming gear. Nothing else in there at all. That's the only reason I'm having to take a backpack. Transalp, of course, with the adventure pack that I walked around last time in a couple, a couple of videos ago. XL Moto roll top bag, and all I'm doing is attaching it to these rock straps here, which are brilliant. This roll top bag is great, but these rock straps, they're a game changer for securing luggage. So I've attached it to this bit of the grab rail, and these are really useful here. These little sections, I just attach the other bit to, and I feed it through. Very clever, it's got these little holes here, so that won't go anywhere. I feed it through the holes, and that will be completely secure. I'm doing a final test of one of our prototype tool rolls as well. So I've got tools in there. Hopefully I won't need it, but that's full of tools. I just want to make sure it feels rugged and secure. That's our company that we've set up for any new watches. And our first product will be this waxed canvas tool roll. This is what I had set up last night. Under here, quad lock USB charging wire attached to the battery under there. Fed through, you can see it here. I didn't want to take the tank off because it's not my bike. Through the air vent here, all the way up to the top, around the back, and you can see vibration dampener and the USB charger under there. So phone set up there, Insta360 up at the top, and that is it. That is all I'm taking on the trip. I barely slept yesterday. I was so excited. For me, there is nothing in the world more exciting than a motorcycle road trip. So there isn't a second to waste because already the way it's going now, I'll be deep into darkness by the time I arrive, hopefully up in Northern England. So let's hit the road.
I'm about an hour and a half in, stopped for some lunch. It took me about 45 minutes to realize why I was so warm while riding. And it's because I've got a screen to protect me from the wind chill factor. I never ride bikes with screens and the difference it makes to keeping your body warm is gigantic. Another positive to this trip in general and going in the depths of winter is that accommodation prices are slashed. I've just booked on booking.com. Beautiful, rustic little gin bar with some accommodation upstairs. Usually 130 pounds. I've booked it for 71 pounds. This is a, well, I hope from the pictures, a stunning looking place. I can't wait to show you it. So it's three hours and 20 minutes away, just north of Leeds and on the bottom edge of the Yorkshire Dale. So it will set me up perfectly for this trip, assuming I can make it. If I can get there by about six o'clock, I think that would be decently good going because the time now is about 1.30 or so. Prep lunch, bit of water, and that will see me through right until the evening. I thought this may happen, but I wasn't 100% sure when it would. I've had to stop to put my waterproofs on as an extra layer of warmth. I think it's a mixture of being further north, where it's slightly cooler anyway, and I'm about an hour away from sunset. So I've done my final stop, two hours away from my location. Final, well, final first actual coffee stop, just to warm up. And I'll do the final bit all in one blast. Trans up's been perfect. It's actually a very good mile muncher. Almost too good. This rarely happens to me. I found myself cruising at 94 miles an hour. Looked down at my speedo thinking I was doing about 70. It just sits so easily on the motorway. And on top of that, it's averaging 62 miles per gallon. Relative to the Bonneville, it's about 30% more than that or so. It's a very good bike for long distances.
Wow. Wow, this place is special. I didn't fully expect this, I'll be completely honest. Built in 1845, this is in the heart of Ilkley, which is a spa town. You have the gin lounge downstairs, which serve 245 different gins from around the world. And above it, you have the guest house. This is one of the rooms. The entire building has been sympathetically renovated in an Edwardian style. And they've left no stone unturned. The second I walked in here, I didn't know how to check in and there was no one around. So I was looking on every single floor, couldn't find anyone. And then I saw just a streak of light at the bottom of the door for the basement. So I opened it, shouted out, is anyone there? And then I found a girl who let me in and gave me my key. But it's got a very, very definite air to it, this house. You can feel all of the history. It's a really, really special place. I feel like this is the perfect start to the Yorkshire trip. It's one of the most countful places I think I've ever stayed in. Right, I'm going to go move the trans out now and unpack, unwind, soak in this incredible building. I'll wrap it up there. I've picked up some dinner from Tesco, so I'm going to go back up to my apartment, which is that one up there. Gorge, watch a film and just chill out. And if you are interested in staying at one of these apartments above the gin lounge, I will leave the details of the spot in the written description below because it said on the door there, if you book directly, you get the best possible price. So I'll include the details. I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's such a unique spot. I can also confirm after only being up north for about half a day, it's not a myth. Northern hospitality is on another level. They are an incredibly friendly bunch up here. Thank you so much everyone for coming along and I will see you all for day two in the next video of the Yorkshire trip.